President Biden wrapping up that high-stakes NATO summit that could change the course of Ukraine's fight against Russia's deadly invasion. The president delivering remarks at a local university in Lithuania today speaking passionately about U.S. support for Ukraine. We will not waver. We will not waver. I mean that. Our commitment to Ukraine will not weaken. We will stand for liberty and freedom today, tomorrow, and for as long as it takes. Earlier, President Biden met with Ukrainian President Zelensky, telling him the U.S. is doing everything it can to help this country, but stopping short of inviting it to join NATO. The president also meeting with the group of seven leaders, announcing a joint declaration to help members of that alliance negotiate deals to help Ukraine's military. ABC's Inez de la Quatera joining me now once again from Lithuania's capital, where that summit was being held. So Inez, Biden did tell Zelensky the U.S. is going to make sure that he gets exactly what he needs, but Zelensky wants a secure NATO invite, and he didn't get that. That's right. Yeah. So that was the big question here in this summit, whether Zelensky would get the, uh, the, the, the specifics he wanted from the NATO uh, alliance, from the NATO military alliance. He, of course, wants Ukraine to uh, join NATO, but he wanted a specific timeline, a clear roadmap. And the alliance has not given that uh, to uh, Zelensky. And so he did voice some frustration yesterday on the first day of the summit. He uh, wrote that uh, it was absurd and unprecedented that his country had not been given a clear roadmap uh, for NATO membership. He uh, criticized the vague wording surrounding the conditions that Ukraine would need to meet uh, for it to become a member of the alliance. And he said that uncertainty was weakness. We saw the, the Ukrainian president striking a more conciliatory tone today. He uh, said he understands that Ukraine cannot join the alliance right now while the war is still ongoing. And he also expressed lots of gratitude for NATO countries and uh, the U.S. So since Ukraine has not been formally admitted, how can NATO members still bolster long-term security with Ukraine just to send a message to Russia that in the end, they can't destroy Ukraine, period? Yeah, so, I mean, that was a big part of the conversation today. We did see NATO trying to reassure Ukraine that, that the alliance still stands firmly with Ukraine, even though they can't provide Ukraine with the specifics that it is asking for. So we saw a number of countries uh, pledging new additional military aid, individual countries doing that, and then the G7 coming together to uh, pledge long-term security guarantees. We heard President Biden in that speech there. You heard it off the top talking about how the U.S. would, would stand with Ukraine for as long as it takes. He talked about the U.S.'s unwavering commitment to Ukraine. And that was NATO countries really rallying to show Ukraine that even though they can't give Ukraine the, the clear roadmap that it wants right now, they're still going to be standing with Ukraine, standing up to Russia, and providing Ukraine with the help that it needs. So what happens next as the president heads now to Helsinki? That's right. Yeah, the president held, heading to uh, Helsinki. Air Force One is wheels up, so he, he should be, is currently uh, in the air. In Helsinki, he's going to be meeting with Nordic leaders. He's going to be welcoming Finland, the newest uh, member of the uh, NATO alliance, celebrating that. We heard the president today talking about how NATO was stronger and more united than ever with Finland joining and Sweden also joining now with the uh, Turkish president Erdogan before the summit even began, uh, dropping his objections to Sweden joining. And, and so clearing the way for uh, Sweden to join. So Vladimir Putin getting the very thing that he uh, dreaded, which is NATO's expansion. Um, we should point out when it comes to Sweden, the, uh, we just found out that the, the Turkish parliament, so a few things still need to happen before Sweden can actually join. Uh, one of those being that the Turkish parliament needs to vote on the measure. And the Turkish parliament uh, is currently on recess and their first session will be in October. So they won't actually vote on that measure until October. So it'll still be a few months before Sweden is able to join. Um, but hugely significant that the Turkish pre president dropped his objections uh, before, before the start of the summit. That was really a show of force and unity. Inez de la Quotera there in Lithuania for us. I know it's been a long a few days, Inez. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.